that was a special series called The Language of Life by Bill Moyers. And it was about poetry. And I love poetry and I was watching it and they showed a clip of a woman reading this really funny, really touching poem. And I loved that poem. This was the days before the internet or anything. So I bought the companion book that was with that series from PBS, which I still get you know, solicitations from this to this day because of that, because I wanted that poem. And that poem was not in the book. <laughs> but it did have a whole chapter about Naomi, she has nine, and it had several of her poems, including one called Famous. But I still wanted that poem, and I kept looking for her books, and I kept buying them, and ever since then I've been a huge fan of hers. She is the daughter of a Palestinian father and an American mother. She grew up in the U.S. and in Israel, and so she has had a front row view of conflict on both sides. Her poetry and stories are about peace and resolution. There is a show, a story show on NPR called Snap Judgment, and they've changed their tagline lately to, it is impossible to hate someone if you know their story. And Naomi's poetry embodies that idea. She travels the world spreading those ideas to children and to adults who should know better, but don't always. I did eventually find the poem that I first heard her read, and I'm very happy to introduce her now so she can read it to all of you. Please work, give me a warm, warm welcome for Naomi Shihab Nye. Valentine for Ernest Mann. Woo. You can't order a poem like you order a taco. Walk up to the counter, say, I'll take two, and expect it to be handed back to you on a shiny plate. Still, I like your spirit. Anyone who says, here's my address, write me a poem, deserves something in reply. So I'll tell a secret instead. Poems hide. In the bottoms of our shoes, they are sleeping. They are the shadows drifting across our ceilings the moment before we wake up. What we have to do is live in a way that lets us find them. Once I knew a man who gave his wife two skunks for a valentine. He couldn't understand why she was crying. I thought they had such beautiful eyes. And he was serious. He was a serious man who lived in a serious way. Nothing was ugly just because the world said so. He really liked those skunks. So he reinvented them as valentines, and they became beautiful, at least to him. And the poems that had been hiding in the eyes of skunks for centuries, crawled out and curled up at his feet. Maybe if we reinvent whatever our lives give us, we find poems. Check your garage. The odd sock in your drawer. The person you almost like, but not quite. And let me know. Thanks to Deb. We feel so fed, right? We're fed. I feel like I made all these amazing new friends in the last 24 hours. Um, I loved everyone's comments tonight. So beautiful. I want each person to make those comments everywhere. Um, you have nourished us. Through your vision, you have connected us. You have gotten us here. You believe. I think you have changed a lot of hearts. Deb, and I will never forget uh, your passion about this show, and I'm so touched to be here. Um, I think of, of a couple of other things tonight before I make my little remarks. Um, I think of a writer I loved since 
Um, I was about 19 years old, named David Curdian, born here 85 years ago in Racine. I think about, I've been reading him all those years. I think about people who do exquisite, meaningful work and are known only to a very tiny circle. And that never undercuts their work and they don't stop to me. They just keep doing it. I think of, of people who are famous and don't want to be. Like really famous. I think of people who use their fame for serious good. Good things alongside. And people who are famous for quirky reasons. And uh, because I've worked with kids all these years, I've heard a lot of kids express a desire uh, to be known. And then we always have that conversation. But what is it really? What does it mean really to you? And I think of the greatest educator I'll ever know in San Antonio, Texas, um, whose funeral I missed this week so that I could come here. I worked in his school for decades. Uh, he was the principal, his name was Paul Rohde. Uh, he was a German, Lutheran, Texan, beautiful soul. Um, and when any kid came to his school, uh, as his very big elementary school, uh, he learned their name and he never forgot it. He just had some miraculous ability 